Hi, and welcome to Art with Mrs. Torres. We have been having a heat wave here in Southern California. It was 118 degrees while we were driving through the valley the other day. So we stopped off to get an ice cream, and I went, oh, my goodness, that was so refreshing. I wonder if there's any artists that have drawn anything that has to do with ice cream. Well, I found something even better. In one of my books that I had in my library, it's called Where the Sidewalk Ends by Shel Silverstein. He has written and illustrated all of these poems, and he has a poem about ice cream, and it's called 18 Flavors. This is how it goes. 18 luscious, scrumptious flavors, chocolate, lime, and cherry. Coffee, pumpkin, fudge, banana, caramel, cream, and boysenberry. Rocky Road and toasted almond butter, scotch, vanilla dip, butter, brickle, apple, ripple, coconut, and mocha chip, brandy, peach, and lemon custard, each scoop lovely, smooth, and round, tallest ice cream cone in town, lying there on the ground. So the, the poem has a little twist at the end because he has obviously dropped this beautiful, tall ice cream cone on the ground. So I thought it would be a fun project for us to do today. We are going to be doing an art project using the first element of art, which is a line, just like we did in our last lesson. And you can see that in some of Shel Silverstein's work, he really uses a lot of line. He does all of his artwork in pen and ink. So we'll be using our Sharpie markers today to do that. But we're going to add a little kick and color and use some either crayons or markers or whatever you have around the house. So let's begin. Well, hello and welcome to Art with Mrs. Torres. Today we are going to be making an ice cream cone inspired by the poem that I just read you called 18 Flavors. That was found in this book, Where the Sidewalk Ends by Shel Silverstein. We're going to be creating a art project using line, which is our first element of art. And then I'm gonna give you an opportunity to create your own flavors and name them. So let's begin. The first thing you're gonna do is gather up your items like we do every week. The first item I want you to get is that paper out of your printer. You're also going to be gathering up a pencil, an eraser, crayons, and a marker for outlining. So there'll be five items. Remember when we're drawing, I always like you to get more than one piece of paper because our Sharpie marker is going to go through the back of the paper. So go ahead and gather up these five items, one, two, three, four, five, and then meet me back here. Go ahead, pause your video and gather those. Welcome back. We are ready to begin. You're gonna be using a pencil. I'd like your paper to be tall. This is called vertical. We're also gonna be using an eraser for right now. I have a suggestion for your crayons. Now, when I leave them on the desk, they just end up rolling around and then I'm always searching for them. So you can either keep them in your box and you can open up the lid of the box so that they kind of just spill out into your hand like this. This is one option. And you can leave them on your desk like that. But my trick is to keep them in a mug or a cup. So next time you are in your kitchen, look for an old cup that maybe your parents aren't using anymore. And you can store your crayons like this. This is the way I keep mine in a mug. And they're a little easier for me to find as I'm working. Okay, let's begin with our drawing. So first off, we're going to look at our shapes of what we're going to be drawing before we begin. So we can already tell this cone forms a triangle. Do you see how the shape of that cone is a triangle? Let me bring that up a little higher. So we're going to be making a triangle shape, an upside down triangle actually. And our ice cream scoops, basically those are gonna be circles with a little bit of a wavy line underneath. Our cherry's gonna be a circle. And then we'll have some fun uh, designing some lettering around the sides. Okay, now when I'm beginning, I always make sure I have extra paper underneath. And I'm gonna find the center of my paper with my finger and then I'm going to make a little pencil dot. That kind of helps me on my placement. So when I'm drawing, I have enough room for everything I'm gonna be drawing. I'm gonna start at the bottom of my paper. Welcome back. 
All right, you've gathered up your paper, your pencil, your eraser, and your crayons. You can either shake your crayons out of your box like this, or you can place them into a cup the way I keep mine, just so they're easier for you to access when we're drawing. Now the first thing we're gonna do before we start to draw is I want you to notice the shapes that we're gonna be drawing. So if you look at our cone, that's gonna be an upside down triangle, and our ice cream scoops are going to be circles, our cherry is going to be a circle. So this is going to be a really simple drawing to draw, and then we're going to have some fun with our coloring. All right, let's go into our paper, making sure it's tall like a door. I'm going to be finding the center of my paper and making a dot with my pencil. That helps me to place my shape and make sure that everything's kind of in the middle. I'm going to go below that dot down to the very bottom of my paper and just a little bit above the bottom of my paper I'm going to make another dot. I don't want the bottom of my cone going off the edge of the paper so I'm just going to make another dot down here and then I'm going to be making a tall V. So when I'm starting from here I'm just going to very lightly bring this line up toward this corner up here at the top of my paper. So I'm just gonna go like this and make a light line for my cone. And then I'm gonna do the same thing, going the other direction, going up to this corner, nice and light. And then once I've drawn the lines and they are as wide as I want it, or as narrow, it's up to you, then I'm gonna round the bottom here. I don't want it to be a sharp point because if you've ever got an ice cream cone before, it's actually not super pointed at the bottom. It's kind of a little bit rounded. Now, if we were going to make the cone by itself, I would have you curve it like this if it was an empty cone, but we're going to be filling ours up with ice cream. So we don't have to really worry about the top of the ice cream cone right now. Okay, so let's start to place in our scoops of ice cream. So instead of just drawing a circle, if you've ever really looked at ice cream when it's on a cone, it has a little squish on the side because when they plop it down on the ice cream cone, it kind of bulges over and then it starts to drip down the side of the cone, especially with these hot days we've been having. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by making our first scoop of ice cream and I'm going to start right over here on the side next to the top of my cone. I'm going to make a little bump right here. I'm going to do the same thing on this side, making a little bump. So that's going to be the edge of my ice cream, and then I'm going to have it dribble down the side. So from here, I'm just going to make a little wobbly line. This time, I'm really going to give it a good dribble right down the side of my cone, maybe another one. Now, once we've got those little dribbles, now we're going to go up and start to form our first ball for our ice cream. So I'm just gonna go right up here from here and just make a little circle or half circle. And then I don't need that dot anymore. We could save it and turn it into a chocolate chip later. <laughs> okay, so we've got our first scoop of ice cream. Now you notice I didn't draw this very dark up here and that's because I'm gonna put another scoop overlapping the scoop. So now I'm gonna go above this one and I'm gonna go on the side, not way up to here at the top because I want at least three scoops. So I'm gonna go right here. I'm gonna make another bump, just like I did here. I'm gonna do the same thing on this side, another bump. So you notice this scoop's gonna get a little bit smaller. I'm gonna do the same thing, doing a wavy line so you can create it however you want. This time I'm gonna make my drip low on that side and then a wibbly wobbly line and maybe another one here. And then I'm gonna form the top of this scoop. So for this scoop, I'm just gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna go up and form kind of like a little mound of mashed potatoes right here. And once I'm done creating the top, I need to erase the center part right here. So I'm gonna go in with my eraser and take this middle section out. This is how it makes it look like it's overlapping the other scoop of ice cream. Okay, so now we have two scoops of ice cream. 
Now, if you have room, you can make a third scoop of ice cream up here. So I could make a little mini scoop right here. Maybe you have more room than me. You kind of know what to do now. You can make a wobbly line, make a drip where you want it to go. And do the top of your ice cream here. And then you're gonna erase the center because we don't need that part anymore. Now it looks like my third scoop is overlapping my one below. Now maybe you made a much bigger ice cream than me and you don't even have room for three. You could just do two and that would be great. Maybe you wanna add some hot fudge on top. That happens to be one of my favorite things. That's just a little added yum. Now if you wanna do hot fudge, you would do the same thing we did here a bump and a bump, and then you would make another drip. Make them kind of long and drippy. And then this one is going to go a little closer to here, to the top. Now you notice in my ice cream cone here, I didn't put hot fudge on mine. I just added a cherry up on top, but we still have room for a cherry. This is just if you want to add one more little detail. And I'm going to erase the top of my ice cream here. And now, if you want to place a cherry on top, what you're going to do is you want it to be kind of below the top of the ice cream, like it's kind of stuck into the actual ice cream. So I'm going to go below this top here, and I'm going to make a big circle. And then I'm gonna add a little curve line right at the top like this. I kind of go bump, bump, and then I'm gonna erase that little middle right there. Kind of looks like a little mini peach. And I'm gonna erase this center line. We don't need that anymore. And then the last part is to put a little stem on our cherry. And now you can have your stem going this direction or the other direction, it doesn't matter. Now, once we've created our ice cream scoops and our cherry and maybe hot fudge, if you made that, I'm going to show you how to do your pattern for the cone now. So uh, we're working with our line work today, which is, of course, our element of art. Now, to do the line work here, you'll notice the lines are on an angle. They're not going straight up and down and across. These are diagonal lines, but you notice they never touch. That's because they're parallel to one another. So in order to do that, we're just going to start right down here at the bottom. And instead of making the line this way, straight across like this, we're going to tilt it on an angle like this. So we're going to draw the first one down here. And then the next one above that is going to go parallel, meaning it's going to go right next to it. And we're going to just keep doing this as we go up. And since the ice cream cone is getting wider, our lines can start getting longer and longer and longer all the way across. And as we do these lines, if you come to a part of your ice cream that's kind of sticking over, you can just tuck your pattern from your waffle cone underneath the ice cream. So now we have a striped ice cream cone, but we actually need to make the waffle pattern. And so we're gonna do the same thing and we're gonna do the lines going the opposite direction. So they're not gonna go straight across. They're gonna go on an angle going the opposite way like this. So this line is going to go this way. So it forms that little diamond pattern. And then I'm gonna go up a little farther, do it again. See how it makes a diamond pattern? I'm gonna go a little higher. And I'm trying my best to make them kind of straight, but if your hand gets kind of wonky, that's okay. Did you notice I jumped over my little drips on my ice cream here? When you're finished, now we've designed our pattern of our waffle cone. We're gonna put our pencil aside and we're gonna move on now to our Sharpie marker. So you're gonna take your marker and we're gonna outline everything. 
Now, when we're doing our line work, um, we want to make sure that we're doing clean lines and we want to draw fairly quickly with our marker, making sure also that you have paper underneath because you know our ink pen is going to leak through to the back. I also recommend trying to draw toward you and not away. So when I push my marker away from me, it's gonna make a screeching sound. It's better to pull the marker toward you. So let me put the cap on the back of my marker. I'm resting my hands down like this and I'm gonna pull my marker to me. And I, tie, I try to keep my marker a little bit on its side. It makes a fatter line than if I hold it straight up and down. Let me show you the difference. If I hold my pen straight up and down, I get a little skinny line. So I like to kind of rest my pen on its side and to make my line even thicker, I go over it two times like that. So now I'm gonna make this line a little thicker. So I'm resting my hand down and then pulling my pen. Now I'm a left-hander. Most of you watching this video are right-handed. Some of you might be left-handed. When I get to the bottom, Instead of bringing it to a sharp point, I'm just gonna kind of round it around a little bit. And then I'm gonna retrace each one of these diagonal lines. Remember, diagonal just means it goes on an angle. Now, did you notice I'm not quite on my pencil line? That's okay, that happens to me whenever I'm retracing my line. Sometimes I change my mind and I think my new line might be better than my old line. When I'm done making my stripes go in one direction, I'm going to do them the opposite direction. Now, am I going too fast for you? If I am, you know what to do. What do you do when I'm going too fast? All you have to do is pause the video, catch up to me whenever you're ready. Now, once my cone is done, it's time to outline my ice cream. So I kind of like this thick line that I'm doing on the side. So I'm going to do the same thing. So each time I do a line, I'm going to repeat the line one more time. So you're going to see me do everything twice. So I'm going to go one, two, then one, two, because I like that thick line. Maybe you like it skinny, but I like it thick. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. One, two, one, two. And then we can't forget our drip on our ice cream on the edge that's dripping down the side of the cone. Now, as I'm tracing around, you'll notice that's a skinny line. I want to do it two times so it matches the side. So I'm going to go over that line again, kind of holding my pen on its side. And when I'm finished making it twice around, you'll notice I go back in and I kind of tap my pen in any spot that I might have missed. Sometimes when I'm going over it, it leaves a little white peekaboo line. All right, moving on to the next one. We're going to do the same thing. And then retrace the bottom. And as I mentioned earlier, don't worry if your hand doesn't go exactly onto your pencil line, or if you miss a spot like that, see how I missed, I'm just gonna go back in and fill it in. Or if you see a part that looks kind of jagged, you can go back in and kind of round it off. That happens to me sometimes too. Do the sides, one, two, don't forget your two times if you're deciding to make it a little bit thicker like I am. And then you're gonna move up to your other scoop if you had room to do three scoops. And when you're all finished, outlining everything and your hot fudge if you decided to add it and your cherry, then we're gonna decide how we're gonna color and what flavors we're gonna be doing. All right, moving on to my hot fudge, or this could also be caramel sauce. That's another yummy topping. It could be strawberries. What's another topping they put on top of ice cream? Whipped cream, 
I guess this would look like melty whipped cream though, right? Because it's kind of dripping down the sides. My final part is my cherry on top. All right, now it's time to erase our pencil lines. I'm gonna put my marker off to the side. <clears throat> Excuse me, and I'm gonna take my magic rubber eraser, resting my hand on the paper as I erase. And the reason I do that is to make sure that I am not wrinkling my paper. So I kind of keep my eraser right here in this section. I call it the duck's mouth. My favorite eraser is Magic Rub erasers. Mine doesn't even say Magic Rub anymore. I've worn it off from my fingers. I buy one of these erasers and it's lasted me for a couple of years. Can you believe that? I have the same eraser. I just keep using the same one. It's not very pretty anymore, but it works fabulous. It also erases colored pencil. That's pretty cool. All right, so I'm gonna brush all my crumbs off. when I like to look behind and see if any of my pen leaked and see it did. That's a good thing. I wasn't drawing on top of my desk. I would have got that all over my desk. All right, let's move on now to our coloring. So as I mentioned earlier, you can keep your crayons coming out of the box like this. I just kind of shake them into my hand when I'm doing this. I kind of turn my box like this, shake them into my hand. This is one way that you can keep your crayons out or you can put them in a cup. This is my method. I like to have them in a cup. That way I can see the colors I need. And now we're gonna start with our cone. So looking at our cone, we're gonna be using more than one color for our cone. So the first color I want you to look for in your crayon set is if you have any kind of color that's either called apricot or peach or tan, any lighter color like this. If you don't have this, that's okay. You could also use yellow. Yellow would be fine. You could use a golden yellow or a regular yellow if you don't have a light peach color. I'm gonna be working with this color. It's called apricot. Doesn't worry about what the name of the color is. It's just a lighter shade that's a little bit lighter than if you were gonna go with the brown. If you don't have a light color, you could just do your brown and do it a little lighter. So I'm gonna take my first color and I'm gonna color this over the entire cone. So I'm just gonna find the direction that my hand is the most comfortable and I'm just gonna give it a good coat of this color over the entire thing. This is the wonderful thing about working with Sharpie markers is that we can crayon right over it and it doesn't smear. It doesn't take you very long to color one base coat over the entire cone. And then when you're done, the next color I'm going to have you look for is brown. My poor little brown is getting worn out. I'm going to have to be peeling the wrapper off pretty soon. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take this brown and we're going to give our cone a little bit of a shadow. And the way that we're going to make it look like a shadow is we're going to be rubbing this brown across each line on both sides of the line, going one direction and the other. It's going to kind of give the illusion of a shadow, a waffle pattern. So I'm just going to choose one of the lines and just scribble a little brown over the line. Now you could choose to do it on one side or the other. I'm going on both sides. So there's a little shadow on both sides of that line. I'm gonna go down the cone until each one of my lines has a little brown on it. And then once I'm finished doing my lines going one diagonal pattern, I'm gonna do the same thing going the opposite direction. So I'm just running my crayon over that diagonal line to give a little bit of a shadow. And then I'm gonna take my brown and I'm gonna run it around the edge here. So when I run my crayon down the sides, it's gonna give a little shadow on this side of my cone. Now, if the ice cream is dripping down onto the cone, there's also gonna be a shadow underneath the drips. So around each drip, I want you to put a little brown. 
because there's going to be a little shadow on top of the cone from that ice cream dripping down. That's already looking pretty fun, huh? All right, time to create our first flavor. So let's look at mine. I did kind of like a mint chip. So I didn't have any color that looked like chocolate mint. So I mixed green and blue together. And that's how I kind of got that color. I just mixed two colors together and then I put some chocolate chips in it. I also like uh, pink bubblegum ice cream. You can see I wrote bubblegum. So I chose to do kind of some different colors in with pink. And then of course my absolute favorite is chocolate. So I want you to be thinking about what flavors you would like. You could do rainbow sprinkles, you could do birthday cake, you could do cake batter, bubble gum, blueberry. I wrote some out to give you some ideas. Apple pie, banana, boysenberry, blueberry, bubble gum, cake batter, caramel, cherry, chocolate. Goodness gracious, chocolate chip. So I want color on mine. I mean, if it was up to me, all of them would be chocolate because that's my favorite flavor, but that would be a lot of brown. So let's see, I think I'm gonna do pink first. I'm gonna do a pink bubble gum. I have to decide which one's gonna be pink. I think my middle one's gonna be pink. So I'm gonna start by doing a darker color. I mean, a little harder edge around the side. I kind of like the look of things being a little brighter or darker around the edge and a little lighter in the middle. So you notice I'm kind of pushing with some medium pressure with my crayon. By the way, if you break your crayon in half, I don't want you to feel bad. It happens to Mrs. Torres too. I broke my chocolate brown today. So if that happens, don't worry. Don't try to tape them back together. It never works. Just save those crayons. We can still use them, especially later when we want to use the side of them. We can peel the wrapper off and use the sides. All right, so now once I've gone over my area of whatever color you're using, blue, green, pink, brown, then I'm going to do a lighter shade inside. So I'm just going to color in one direction across the entire ice cream. I'm not pushing really hard, just nice gentle color. And then if you want it to stand out even more, you can go in and find another color that's similar. So I have a little bit brighter pink in my box. And if I want to, I can use this color around the edges. See, it's a pink, but it's a little bit brighter, or maybe you have a little bit different shade of blue. So I'm gonna put that color around the edge. And around the shadow at the top. And then put a light coat of that over. I kinda of like to do two colors. I'm not coloring hard. Just a light coat. And then what I do to mix those two better is I go back in with my first color and do one more coat over the entire thing. So what that does is it kind of works like a blending tool and it'll blend those two colors together and it gets rid of all that white paper that might be poking through. All right, so once I have finished my first scoop, then I'm gonna move on and decide what I'm going to do for my next scoop. So you might wanna do something that's got other colors in it. Maybe you want to go in and make some confetti or some chocolate chips or maybe some fudge ripple. You could go in and make like a little bit of a streak of brown through it to look like fudge ripple. So I'm gonna let you have some creative time right now to create some different flavors. And I'm gonna have you pause the video, go ahead and create each one of your flavors of ice cream, and then meet me back here, we'll work on the hot fudge and the cherry. So go ahead and finish your two other scoops of ice cream, pausing the video, and then put it back on when you're done, and then I'll show you how to do our hot fudge and our cherry, okay? All right, so you've colored your three scoops of ice cream, 
And I want to make sure that you're going back in and outlining your colors a little brighter around the edges like we did the first one. So for instance, in my pink one here, I want to go back in and make that a little bit brighter around the edge. So see what I'm doing? So get your crayons and whatever those other two scoops that you just colored, make sure that you kind of added a little extra around the edge just to add some shadow in. And right at the top here where your ice cream is hanging down, it's dripping down onto the flavor below it, you also want to add a shadow of that same color there too. And then this one is kind of like a mint chip. I don't have a mint chip color, so I mixed green and this green and blue. I think I added a little bit of blue in there. And then what I can also do is I can go in with a white crayon. Oops, I've got my crayons broken. Let me get another one. I can go in and take my white crayon and just kind of blend those colors together to make it kind of look like mint chip. That's my one of my favorite flavors. And then to make the chip part, the chocolate chip, I could just go in with my brown and add some little brown polka dots. Now for the hot fudge, if you want to add hot fudge to your ice cream, so what you can do is take your brown crayon and press kind of hard around the side. When I say hard, not so hard that you break the crayon like I did earlier when I was making my first one. So I'm gonna go around the edge. And then I'm gonna leave a little space up here at the top where I'm not gonna put any brown when I start to color it in. I want it to kind of be shiny. And that's gonna be kind of like the highlight so as I color, let me put a little shadow underneath my cherry too. I'm gonna to very softly color it. And I'll leave a little white paper right up here at the top, right here where the light would be kind of shining down. And then, once I do that, I can also go in and put a little bit of black around the edge, not too dark, just a little bit around the edge here and here. See how I'm just putting a little bit right around the sides. And of course, I'm not gonna leave it black. I'm gonna go back over it with my brown crayon and color it again. So I'm just adding just a hint. It's gonna kind of make it look a little darker or shadowed around the side and underneath my cherry here. I'm going to go back in with my brown and give it another coat right over that chocolate side. So when I'm rubbing my brown over the black, what it does is it makes it look a little bit darker. And then I'm going to try to leave a little white right up at the top. So my crayon kind of picks up that black and blends it and makes it look almost like a dark brown. Yum, that looks a lot like hot fudge. Now for our cherry, now you could just go in with straight red, but I like to mix pink and red together. So I have a bright pink in my box. You could also work with a light pink too. So if you just color with flat red, it's gonna look like this. But if you blend pink first, and then you add the red over it, it just makes the red a little brighter. So it's kind of a little bit more rich. And I'm gonna go around the edges and I'm gonna leave a little shiny light at the top of my cherry also. So it's shiny. So I'm gonna go in with my pink and then put a little red over it. And try to leave a little bit of white at the top, like a little shiny light. And then I'm going to color my stem. 
think cherry stems are brown. Now, once you're all done with your ice cream, you can stop the video here if you'd like to, or you can go in and start adding some different flavors and writing them in with your crayon. So that's how I did mine. I just looked at my list and got some ideas and started writing all the different flavors of ice cream. So if you'd like to do that, pause the video here and I'm going to leave that list just like this, and then you can look at all of these ideas. Now you could write them in crayon. You could write them in pencil first and then go over them with a marker later. I'm going to leave that up to you. All right, I hope you had fun with our lesson today, and I can't wait to keep teaching you art. Thanks for joining me. Have a great day.